Welcome back to Good Day Street Talk. I'm James Ford. This morning we have been discussing noise pollution. Let me reintroduce our guest real quick, a psychologist and an expert in noise, Dr. Arlene Bronzaft. Also representing the New York Nightlife Association, attorney Robert Bookman. Now, we, we just before the break, we were talking, uh, among other things, about this whole idea of neighbor versus neighbor complaints and how those may need to be more uh, may need to be addressed more strongly. The question I'd ask this, and why don't I start with you, uh, Mr. Bookman? Aren't small businesses, including nightclubs, they're still neighbors, though, are they not? And in that sense, don't they have a certain responsibility that may or may not be fully addressed in the proposed changes to the noise code? Absolutely, they have a responsibility, and. Uh for all the reasons you know that Arlene uh, stated, and and for many others, where we you know you, you can't really disturb your neighbors. Our issue as an industry is really twofold: one concerning the code, and one is more of a macro issue. The macro issue is we have not changed the locations where nightlife uh, are allowed to exist you know, under zoning. You know, for 40, 50 years, it's been the same. What has changed is where residences are allowed to develop. There's been a huge gentrification in this New York City, especially in Manhattan in the last three decades. Entire neighborhoods that were not allowed to have residential, that were pioneered by nightlife, are now have multi-million dollar condominiums. Soho, NoHo, Tribeca, the Flatiron District. We have clubs that are good for New York City's economy. It's good, you know, it, it, there's no question about that. It's good for the vibrancy of New York. Spending millions of dollars in the last few years, open, Crowbar or others, opening up on the far west side. Yeah. <coughs> now the city has changed the zoning for that area. And in the next few years, there will be multi-million dollar condominium buildings opening up on the same block as, as Crowbar, uh, as Bungalow 8, of all these other areas, the meat market district, we have that now. Right, right. And what happens is, these codes that the, that the city you know, uh, uh, endorse do not provide for tougher construction standards for those buildings. So they don't require triple glazed windows, double thick walls. So before where we had a factory you know, or a parking garage next to us, we now share a party wall with a residence. Got it. And that residence wants the same quality of life as if they were living in Gramercy Park. And we object to that. We think in a regulatory environment, while there is no room for a bad operator, there has to be room for the industry. And who comes first is an important issue. Uh, Dr. Brown, that's so. not sufficient. Because a number of these restaurants and a number of these cafes have expanded into the streets so that they don't confine their sound just to the interior. And you're saying this has happened since the smoking ban? No, I think that, no, no, no. The cafes oh, now have sidewalk cafes. Uh, you have uh, doors that are open. I mean, they haven't just, uh, it, it hasn't just been the laws that have changed. It's the way they're doing business that has changed also. And so they have expanded out into the streets. I have cafes in my own neighborhood that were just inside. Now they're outside. And now the music is outside, not just confined. So there have been changes as far as That's the true. bars and the cafes. You have to That's acknowledge true. that. So the city is a partner on those cafes. They but make they a lot of money changed. on our use of the public sidewalk. And that's right. So there you're in the favor of what the city does. But in terms of noise, you haven't been. If they have expanded into our streets, there have been changes there too. And the other thing, in terms of construction, I agree that if a building is moving into an area that may be more industrial, uh, they, they should look to windows, and in fact, if you've been looking at the New York Times, just recently, last week, they dealt with architecture and how you can make a building more soundproof. But so should the cafes. And is so that. should the bill. They should. The other thing that's happened, when people come to bars and cafes, how much has your association done to urge them to be quiet? A lot. Uh, I, we, that's what I've asked when we, for. When we started, I would like to see the New that. York Nightlife Association, when it started seven, eight years ago, started with something that was revolutionary called the Good Neighbor Policy, uh, which all of our uh, members had to sign on to. And the first point of the Good Neighbor Policy was be considerate of your neighbors. How? I've looked for signs. There is one sign on York Avenue that I have to single out because that's huge. I have asked your association. I have asked David. Never asked our association. Oh. I've asked David. And he, uh, in several emails, who works with you, right. and I said, send me the, show it to me. Show me the letters that you write asking them to be good neighbors. Show me the signs that everybody is tacking up to the walls. I'll now, particularly the with the smoking ban, they're now out well, on the street. A, but that's not our fault. 
what is it your fault? That, that people are out on the street because of a smoking but ban that we still, opposed. I know you opposed it. So we're enforcing it. But no, but even wait though we a opposed second. it, you want to be and a it's good, creating extra street be noise. Be a good neighbor. Just have a sign up. You know, one thing about noise. If people are just encouraged to be quiet, look, you, you're, we're asked when we come on here not to bring on cell phones. You know, we have to deal with courtesy. Let me tell you something. There are rights, and our forefathers founded this country on a bill of rights, but there also is a bill of responsibility. Sad they hadn't written it. But if you're going to live in a civilized society, you need some responsibility. And I would like to see some signs up. I'd like to see some of the evidence that you point to when we do an interview that you say you remind the individuals to do. Let me just see that you remind them to keep their doors closed. You remind them to use some soundproofing. There has to be give and take on both sides. All reasonable. Otherwise, All reasonable New York sides. City would not be the Absolutely. vibrant, exciting Perfect. city Absolutely. it is. Absolutely. One of those responsibilities also has to be when you move into a new building on the West Side Highway, it's going to be noisier than if you move into a building in Gramercy Park. And there is no differentiation in this code and if we're going to and this is a it's first time in 30 years we're changing it and we're going to live with it for at least another 30 years let's use this as an opportunity right. to correct these classic mistakes that were in the code for the last time there should be a difference between uh sound in the meat market district and sound on the upper east side uh w and there is no recognition of that here if a tree you know falls in the woods is it really making no you know noise or sound i mean i'm not i didn't I remember my philosophy course in college, and you could debate that all day long. But if, you know, if in the meat market district where there are no lawful residences, if your sound system is audible on the sidewalk through your plate glass window, but it's quieter than the street noise around you, is that a real problem? What public policy is being served by making that a violation so of the noise code? But listen, in terms of the noise code, for 30 years we've lived with the old code. Noise is now the number one complaint. So obviously, we need a change. We need a change that will quiet the city, lessen the din, but maintain its exciting vibrancy. That is a given. And that's what we have to work on. But it has to be revised. You agree the code has to be revised? And you even want to include more restrictions. I agree. That's From what I've heard, even more. On that point of agreement, we're going yes. to have to take another break. Okay. Um, but we will come back momentarily with some final thoughts from our guests. Please stay right here. Thanks. Yeah? You like the